Hello guys, it's MeshTech here. Today I want to show you how to install an internal Wi-Fi module to your RG351P and so kind of close the gap to a RG351M in terms of functionality. In this video I will show you the best module to buy to get the job done easily and will go through the required steps together with you. In case you already use an external Wi-Fi adapter you might still benefit from this mod because like that your two USB-C ports remain free to connect external controllers for example. With a Wi-Fi connection on your RG351P you gain some extra features with your device such as the option to download new themes, scrape your ROMs directly on your device, play multiplayer games online via RetroArch's Netplay feature, access the data on your device from your PC without stressing the SD card every time, online updates in apps like Ember Ports and online firmware updates directly on your device using the ArcOS firmware. This mod is very beginner friendly because the module we're gonna use fits perfectly to the board and we only have to solder a few connectors. So weapon yourself up with a soldering iron and let's get started. Let's start with a checklist of the required equipment you need for this mod. First thing you'll need is the module itself. You can get it from AliExpress for around $3. I'll put you a link into the video description that will take you right to this module. Beside that you'll need a soldering iron or best a complete starter set for around $20 or euros in case you don't own one already. The good thing about the set is that it already comes with some solder, a stand, a pump and maybe also some solder wick. I'll leave you a link to a very basic but complete set into the video description as well. The soldering iron I'm using in this video is a wireless one because I like the freedom of having no cable messing around when I solder. But for sure this will work with any soldering iron you can get. I also recommend you to get some polyimide tape to put it in between the module and the board to lower the chance of getting electrical shortcuts. And last but not least, your RG351P. So now that we got all stuff together, we can start. First, we need to open up the device. Be sure that your RG351P is powered off and turn it over to the backside. Here you'll find four screws in each corner that we need to loosen. I used a T6 X50mm Torx screwdriver to do this. As all four screws are loosened, we can start removing the back cover. I recommend you to start at a corner and get your fingertips in between the back cover and the device body. From here make your way around the device by gently unclipping the back cover step by step until the cover releases. The shoulder buttons may jump out of their position like it happened to me here but that's not a big deal, you can easily put them back into position at the end when the job is done. Since the battery is taped to the back cover, find the battery cable in the top left corner over here and unplug it from the mainboard so we can put the cover aside. The spot down here is the place where we need to install our Wi-Fi module too. Put this drilled red-black cable aside so the spot is free to place the module to it. And this is the connector cable of the speaker and the reason why Embernic decided to deliver their later versions of the RG351P without this pre-installed Wi-Fi module. The signals from the Wi-Fi antenna interfered with the speaker signals and caused some crackling noise when Wi-Fi was active. Now that the speaker cable is out of the way, we can take the Wi-Fi module and place it to the board. This is the final position where we want to install the module to. On the right hand side you see the six pads we need to solder to install the module to the board. By the way, on the left hand side of the module you see the Wi-Fi antenna. So that we check the position of the module on the board, 
and see that no cables are in the way no more, we can now remove the module again and prepare the spot before we start soldering it to the board. I recommend you to unplug the speaker cable from the mainboard and press it to the left side so we don't damage it when we start soldering. Cut off one or two pieces of the polyamide tape and put it to the board to cover the left side pins with it. Take care that you don't cover the six connector pins on the right hand side of the module. Now take your soldering iron and heaten up the golden pads by pressing the soldering iron to it gently. From time to time you can test if the solder melts to it by tapping the solder to the pad and the soldering iron. As soon as you feel it melting, put a small blob on it. Put this blob of solder only to the first pad and leave the others empty for the beginning. Then position the module to the spot and place the soldering iron so that it contacts the pad on the mainboard and the module. As the solder melts, the module will take contact with the mainboard. Repeat this step again for the next pad. Place the soldering iron so that it contacts the pad on the mainboard and the pad on the module. Then put a blob of solder to it until it melts to the pad. Since you heaten up the pad on the module and the mainboard, the solder will melt to both and make a connection between them. Repeat this step until all pads are soldered. In the end, it should somehow look like this or better. I additionally add some polyamide tape to the top of the module just for some extra protection. But this is not really necessary to do. Now you can take the speaker cable and plug it back to its socket. Next we can take the battery cable and plug it back to its socket too. Now is the time to put the shoulder buttons back into position before we close the device. Ensure that the buttons fit correctly, otherwise the cover will not close. As the back cover is back in position, you can press it gently to the device body until all clips rest in and we're done. We can now power on our RG351P and see if it gets connected to our Wi-Fi again. As the device booted up, press start to enter the main menu and scroll all the way down to the network settings. And as you can see, we get connected to our Wi-Fi using the internal Wi-Fi chip. Now that we reached that point, take your right hand and clap it three times to your left shoulder. Well done! Now that everything works fine, don't forget to screw the four screws back into your device and enjoy the freedom of having internal Wi-Fi with your RG351P and both USB ports free for use while being connected to the internet. You can now make use of features like the internal themes downloader to give your device a new look or scrape your ROM collection online to add box art to recently added ROMs, only to name two examples. As you can see, for only a few dollars you can give your RG351P a massive upgrade. I tried to cover all required equipment and necessary steps in this video to give you a guide so you can upgrade your device too. If you don't feel comfortable to do this, I'd rather recommend you to make use of an external Wi-Fi module. Remember, there is always a risk to break your device if you do modifications like this. Still, if you have any questions about the process that I didn't cover in this video, 
or need some further tips and tricks to get the job done, let me know in the comments below. You know, I always try to answer every question that rises up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, let me know with a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thanks for watching, enjoy your RG351P and have a great day. Bye!